Hello everyone and welcome back to another Minecraft video and today's tutorial we're going to be looking at this awesome looking Japanese or Asian style prayer bridge. This is an awesome looking design and I love the colour scheme and the use of the copper blocks and the roof. It's worth mentioning that the material list for this is everything that is above the waterline. So if you have a river or a lake that is deeper than the one I have, all you have to do is extend those sandstone blocks downwards. Well I hope you enjoyed the video and if you did leave a like and consider subscribing if you want to see more like this in the future. But with that all said, let's go straight into the tutorial. Alright guys, so a few notes about the bridge and the placement of the bridge. So it's actually 25 blocks wide, so from this point here all the way over to that point is 25 blocks. You're going to want your river on the water underneath to be at least 17 blocks wide and that way we have small little water channels that go on the left and right side of the bridge so the water here does need to be 17 blocks wide it can be a little bit wider and just extend down the ends but for the one i'm going to build here it's going to be 17 blocks of water then it's going to be three blocks and then the very first one is going to be on these yellow markers here same with that side there's going to be three block gap um, of land and then there's going to be the very first point of the bridge Another point to make before we get started is I'm going to be using smooth sandstone to build up the main structure of the bridge but if you're doing this in survival you may want to texture it up as you go. I will do mines at the end but if you're doing it as you go when you are building it in survival this is the look and feel that we're going to go for. So we're going to have some regular sandstone down near the bottom sections. We're going to have cut sandstone here and there to break up the texture and look like bricks that are part of the build. The main body is going to be smooth sandstone mixed in with some regular sand to change up the texture and then every now and then we're going to throw in one or two stairs just to make it look like a little brick is missing from parts of this bridge. So like I said if you're going to do this in survival you may want to go with the texturing as you're building it but for me I'm going to build up the structure with the smooth sandstone and texture it out at the end. Okay to start we're actually going to do the cut sandstone just on these end ones as these are going to be cut sandstone anyway so put these on the blocks there and there. Then leave a block gap and place another sandstone block there and then one beside that and then go up by another block. This should take you right to the edge of the water. You can bring those sandstone blocks along and line with your other cut sandstone and place another one right there. Come the inside and then do upside down sandstone stairs on the three middle blocks. With a temporary block and another smooth sandstone coming out just like that and another block in front of those ones and bring those all the way across come underneath and place upside down stairs on the three middle ones so you have this little tunnel right here then taking andesite stairs and full andesite blocks we're actually going to come in and on the block on the inside here so leave a block gap then andesite stairs andesite stairs again one more layer and then a layer of andesite blocks filling in that gap and that's going to be the first part of the staircase leading up then we want to repeat all of this on the other side just flipping it round okay so you should have your two staircases in place now the one on the left the one on the right looking exactly the same uh, another point to mention is if you want to come underneath and any of these blocks here that go straight from the sandstone onto the dirt you can just replace these with some sandstone blocks or some of the, the regular sandstone or the cut sandstone right there and that's going to bring the bridge down and look like the foundations are into the ground so I want to do that on both of the sides just so it doesn't look like it's sitting on top of the dirt. Okay moving on to the main pillar sections now come into the left hand side and take a temporary block and place it on the side of this block here and then a two blocks there and place a sandstone on the end break away those then this one going to be three blocks wide and two blocks thick going back so it should be sticking out one from the edge of this then it's going to be five high from the top of the water so that's number one two three four and five and then bring all those blocks up to meet at the top so they're all five high and then you want to extend that down at the bottom however deep your river or lake is extend it all the way down until it meets with the bottom of the riverbed then you want to create another one of these pillows on this side and obviously two on the opposite side right there Four pillars done in place we're going to finish the path off and taking an andesite slab place it on top of these sandstone blocks right here and then bring that all the way across until you meet up and place it on top of the sandstone on the other side and that's going to be the main pathway then take your sandstone and bring it across on this 
andesite slab all the way, then come out by two on that side and two on this side. So you have this tunnel right here and extend those down as well to the riverbed floor. Repeat that again on the other side, so bringing your sandstone all the way across and then two out each side all the way to the bottom. And then simply connect these ones up on the inside of our tunnel. While you're underneath, place some smooth sandstone stairs on the three middle ones covering the andesite with some smooth sandstone slabs right there. And that's going to be the tunnel for the main bit of the water to get through this bridge. Now we're going to take some end stone and detail out some of these areas. So come to the left hand side in front of our first little tunnel and place an end stone brick block right there and right there with two stairs and an upside down stair underneath. Again, if you have these ones here on the edge of the water, just bring those down until they meet with whatever your riverbed floor is. Do the same on the other side. So end stone brick there, there with two stairs, an upside down stair. And again, you want to replace any dirt blocks underneath. For the middle, take some end stone brick slabs, place them on the bottom half of the top sandstone block right there. Upside down, end stone stairs with regular stairs either side. A full block underneath of those. Upside down stairs again under this block and under that block, regular stairs in front of those, and then finally come underneath and just place an end stone slab right there and there. That gives the water a nice flow through the middle of our tunnel. We want to repeat all of this on the other side as well. Okay, it's time now to bring this to life a little bit more and add in some color. So, we're going to use a lot of the acacia variants of the wood so we're going to come in and place upside down acacia stairs up against the back of these stairs there and then two at the top with a slab coming out from each one of those and that last will end one here on top of our cut sandstone we're going to place an anvil with a lantern so again do that on the other side we're going to have upside down stairs here on the sides of those andesite stairs with some slabs coming out from the side of those our anvil and our lantern for the top barrier here we're going to place an acacia upside down stair, slab, stair, slab, stair, slab and another stair. On top of the ones with the stairs we're going to place an acacia trap door and that gives a nice little barrier on the top section. Come underneath and on your side tunnels here we're going to place an acacia fence with a fence gate on the side and a fence gate on the bottom. Same on the other side, fence, fence gate, fence gate. On the middle we're going to just do fences all along this top section with a fence gate on either side and a lantern hanging from that middle fence right there. Once again you guessed it, we're going to copy all of this on the other side as well. Finally come to the top of our tower sections and on the two end ones on the outside place some red sandstone walls with a hopper on top. So that goes on each one of the four towers. These are going to be the supports that hold up our roof section. And then we're going to use a acacia fence, punch out this block here, one from the top, place an acacia fence in the centre like that, and once again repeat on both sides. Before I get to the roof, I'm going to do all the texturing I mentioned at the beginning, so it should look something like that in the end. If you've done this in survival, you should already have textured this up by now, but if not, I'm going to do that in a little bit of a time lapse so you can see just what I mean and how it's going to turn out in the end. And there we go, the texturing is now in place. You see I've got the sandstone near the bottom with cut sandstone here and there as bricks with some stairs as little bits of the bricks that have broken away over time. So something like that is how it should look in the end up. And now it's time to move on to the roof. So you want to take a temporary block and place it on top of one of these hoppers and then take a waxed cut copper stair right in front of that temporary block. Bring those waxed cut copper stairs all the way across until you meet up with the other hopper at the other end. At the end you want to place a cut copper slab on the top half of this stair and bring it around and then one on top of this middle section and break away the bottom so you have this shape. Do the same with the other side with the slab, bring it across and around, one on top and break that one away. Then come to the other side and do the same with a temporary block in your stair and then bring those stairs along to the end again. Placing in your slabs as we've done before on this side and on the original side. 
Then with these ones, you just connect them up again the same way. So we're going to put in some stairs across. Like so until they meet up. And do the same on that side with some stairs. All the way across until meet up with the other side like so. To fill in the rest of the roof, we're going to use some dark prismarine stairs. So we're going to place a temporary block in with your stair. And this is going to come all the way around. And then the next layer, we're going to place temporary block again with a stair. And this is going to go up. And then another one on top of that going up like so. And we're going to just do this all the way around the entire roof. Alright, awesome. Once you have dark prismarine in place for the roof, you should be left with this single gap here in the middle. So we're going to take some wax cut copper again with the start stairs and the slabs and we're going to use the full block to place it in front of the very first gap right here have that come out by two and then one slab on the bottom then an upside down stair with a slab on top and a slab coming out again from that repeat that again the other side so a block covering the first hole that's going to be two wide and then a slab coming from that upside down stair with a slab on top and a slab coming out like so. You should have a three block gap in the middle. And that gap we're going to fill in with some andesite full blocks. Then break away the three stairs in front of those. And on the other side. So we're going to have a three by three of andesite blocks. Place a temporary block in the middle with some upside down andesite stairs. Going all the way around. And it should create this shape right here. Break away that temporary block and place in a campfire. Then place lightning rods on each one of those upside down stairs with a full block on the edges like so of cut copper and then a slab of cut copper again on the corner ones and that's going to be a nice little top section with some smoke all right so the only thing left to do now is the interior of this bridge here to tidy up this roof section so we're going to come in and on top of our hoppers here place a full block of dark prismarine with a stair coming from that a full block on top of that and once again a stair with a full block on this one do that on the other side as well full blocks stairs full blocks stairs and full block at the very top one we're going to do a slab right there and bring that slab all the way across until it meets with the other end repeat the same we've done on that side with full blocks and stairs of dark prismarine working our way up then in between the ones that we've just done and between the hoppers place an upside down stair there and there on these three blocks the same on both sides then take a waxed cut copper slab and bring it across of this dark prismarine line along the middle and on the edges then we're going to come in by a block and do upside down stair there and there 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 and there the same on that side every second block and then fill these ones in at the top where you can see the andesite and things just with another slab like so and the final touch is some lighting so place a chain in between these two first stairs with a lantern a chain in the very center with a lantern and another chain at this side with a lantern and there we go we have our interior all sorted and we have our bridge complete and there we go, the build is complete and I am very proud of this one and how it turned out. Again, as I said at the beginning, I love the use of the copper with the dark prismarine for the roof. I think it is a match made in heaven with the acacia as well, bringing that bit of colour to the sandstone base. My favourite part is the little tunnels to let the water through from one side of the bridge to the other. And I think all in all, it is a build that is pretty cool and work, would work brilliantly in any Asian or Japanese themed area that you may be building. So guys, if you enjoyed the video, then please leave a like down below and subscribe to the channel if you're not already. And with that, one thank you very much for watching. Until the next one, bye bye.